Welcome everyone to Cape Town, <laughs> the most uh, favorite city in Africa. <laughs> How's everyone? Are you feeling as good as I do? Yes. I know you've been working very hard for this evening, and may God bless you for your effort. I know you have been working hard, and God will reward you, or you reward yourself, or best you don't have any reward. <laughs> once in a lifetime, or once in many lifetimes, because uh, not everyone has the honor to be here like myself and meet so many intelligent people in one evening together like this. It is a great privilege and I would like to tell you how grateful I am. And may God bless you, bless your country and bless the world. They have prepared a lot, like two weeks for this evening, and uh, I'm very, very grateful for all these generous, enthusiastic, and loving people. They are the ones who deserve the most praise, the most uh, loving comment. Without them, perhaps the world would have been different. Their effort is always appreciated, not only by myself, but I guess by all the people, by you as well. It is a great work. They have worked very hard. Please thank them for me. <laughs> a lot of people here, there. <laughs> They are really, really so highly developed people. So for everything in this life, we prepared like that. We must prepare a long time for everything that we want to enjoy or everything we want to experience. We even prepare for the rainy day. We work hard and we spend some and we put some in the bank or some in the saving account for some emergency, and we even save for retirement, and we prepared for the funeral service, <laughs> but uh, we forgot to prepare the road. So every one of us know that we do not live here very long, we do not stay here very long. But the worldly demand the survival the struggle have always tried to make us forget what we are here for and have always tried to make us forget that we will not be here very long at all. Anyhow, all of us will leave this uh, physical world one day, but not all of us prepared for that final departure. And that's why most of us are feeling uneasy and very fearful of that day. Even though some of us are very young still, already worry about the fearful day of departure. That is because we have not prepared very well for that day. We prepare for insurance, we prepare for sickness, we prepare for the house, mortgage and everything but we have not prepared for the day that we depart from this world. In the Bible, it is mentioned that forsake the flesh for the spirit, learn to die so that you will begin to live. We read that every day, or more than once a day. But many of us do not know how to die daily so that we can know life as it truly is. Of course, that is all right also. That is all right also. 
because we all have eternity to make choice again and again. I'm here today not to show you how to live your life, I want to show you how to die. <laughs> because only when we learn how to die and face death squarely, then we will not be afraid anymore of the unknown. Because once we die, it's just like we're living now, except much, much better condition. We're more free. We can move anywhere at the speed faster than light. We can have anything we want in an instant. And we are freer than the bird. And we can have access to God anytime because we will be one with God. But that is if we're prepared for it. Because our thought is very powerful. In everyday life, whatever we think, whatever we desire the most, these things will come to us. And suppose at the time of departure from this world, if our thought were dwelling on something and it has not come true yet, we return again to this physical planet to live out our desire, to fulfill our wishes. So in order for someone who do not like to come back here again, or someone who would like to master the destiny of their future existence, after this existence, there is a way, there is a way to prepare for that. At the time of departure from this world, if our thought is very powerful about something, we will be drawn to that thing or that event or that desire. That when we are alive, we train our thought in a very positive way every day. We train as much as we can until it becomes second nature, until it becomes us then at the time of death, we will go where our thought leads us. Because we are the essence of God, we have got power within us, whether we are aware of it or not. So our thought is, is practically very, very powerful. If during our lifetime we have been brainwashed into believing that we are sinners, that we are a wretch, that we are unredeemable, that we are not worth the love of God, that we will go to hell, and then we have been described how terrible hell is, etc., etc. Then at the time of death, if we believe in that, we will go to the so-called hell, even though hell doesn't exist. We create or other people create for us. Therefore, in order to free ourselves, we have to be acquainted ourselves again with the true teaching of all the masters since ancient time. That teaching is God or Buddha or Allah is ever merciful. And we are the children of this highest power, and we will be forever loved, forgiven, and helped in any way possible in this life and the life after. I have seen that myself. I have seen God's power at work. I have seen only love and mercy in the realm of invisible as well as the realm of physical. There is no such thing as damnation or hell or revenge from God. Because even if our mortal parents love us and forgive us time again and again, our Godfather or Godmother would be even infinite time more forgiving, more loving. The only problem is we have long been brainwashed into thinking 
that we may be punished for whatever mistake we may make in this world, which we will do. We do all the time because of our physical brain and the physical body and the physical environment force us into making mistakes. Doesn't matter what mistake we make, God can always repair. So He would never condemn us or punish us in any way that we have been made to believe. That's the way I have discovered. So I would like to share it with you. And I hope that from today you will keep this in your mind, whether you would like to study further uh, with us or not. Just remember, God is merciful and have no fear whatsoever. Either you are still here or you depart. At the time of departure, there will be beautiful beings of heaven waiting for us immediately as the soul leaves the body. The reason why many people have not been able to see this, including the death, because they have not prepared themselves. Maybe some of these people have prepared themselves in the wrong way, in a negative way, because they have thought that they've done something wrong in their life. So they expect damnation, they expect punishment, and that's what they will get. Whatever you believe, that shall be materialized because you are God. You are one with God always, even though at the moment, due to the physical hindrance, some of us do not realize this. But we have nothing but God within without us. We are nothing but God's essence. There's nowhere else we could go but within God's embrace every time, 24 hours. We are separated from God because of our thinking, because of our deep-rooted belief that we are mere mortal. In order to remember this, that we are God again, we must train ourselves backward again. The way we have trained ourselves to think separate from God, we have to retrain in the opposite direction. And we will do that until finally it becomes automatic. And then because we contact God every day through our diligent and pure intention of practice, we will know for sure that we are one with God. So at the time of departure, there's nothing but God surround us or heavenly beings that come and greet us to the higher dimension of love. Some of the deaf people do not see this phenomena, even though Jesus stand by, Buddha is near, they would not see this. Also, they would not realize that they could manifest anything at will, that they have the power of creativity in their hand, especially after leaving this physical body, the whole power will be given, will be returned to us again. Not returned, but then without the hindrance of this physical body, we will be all powerful again. Just like the day we were with God, just like the day we have not descended into this world. But some of us, when we depart from this world, because we did not know this secret, we did not learn this secret, we did not learn to master our thinking while we are in the physical body. So at the time of death, we forget even more. 
So some of us, or probably you have heard that some people who died came back and complaining that they are in hell and they need help, they need prayer, all that, etc., etc. These are true also, but only true to these people, not true as general, not true to you and not true to me. For those who have learned the secret of the universe, who have learned the power of creativity, who have learned to be one with the universal, mighty power. They know everything before they die and after they die. They are the master of their own destiny, anywhere, now and after. But to arrive there, we need some practice. It may take a few days, a few weeks, or a few months. Not only we practice to remember our own creative power only, but we practice so that we also enjoy heaven while living also, enjoy contacting with God's intelligence while we are still here on this planet, so that we can make use of this power to enhance our life and the lives of the people that walk on our path. But this takes some discipline, even though it is so easy. We would rather work for money. We would rather work for car, for house, <laughs> for beauties, than to work to re-earn the kingdom of God again. Why? It's because our habit, whatever we have been trained to do since we were young, we continue doing that. The brain doesn't like change. The brain likes everything just settled, simple, fixed, every day the same routine. Whether bad or good, he likes that. He's very upset when some change takes place. Because the machine is like that, the brain is also only a machine. And even the power behind the brain, which is the mind, is also not very highly qualified for the purpose of attaining heaven. The mind is just like electric power behind the computer. So we have to return to the source of all wisdom and truth. Because if we do not train ourselves now, at the time of death, it will be too late. Our brain, our mind, our thinking has been fixed into some negative order. We have not enough time to escape from that or to repair from that. We can do so during the time that we sojourn in this planet. This is the easiest way. Because if we have not prepared for that day, we have not learned to know what we are doing and where we are going, then at the time of death we will be overwhelmed by different dimensional karma. Karma is the Sanskrit term for the law of cause and effect. Whatever we did in this lifetime will ingrain the impression in our thinking, and when we die, we bring it with us. So if we want to erase that, we must do some deep contemplation, deep purification. We can call that meditation, contemplation, deep prayers but we must do it correctly. There's very easy way to do it, but must be correct. Just like everything else, there's a way to do it, the correct way. And if we know that, it's very easy. At the time of departure, we all hope to go to heaven. 
we normally should. Every average citizen of the world will go to heaven. But there are different degree of enjoyment of heaven, just like different housings in Cape Town. Some house cheaper, <laughs> some house are more expensive, with more equipment, more comfort, swimming pool, <laughs> etc., everything. Now, to the extent of our developed consciousness, to that extent we will enjoy heaven after we leave this physical world. That is, if we have trained ourselves sufficiently enough to ascend to heaven immediately after death, or else we would be sometimes hovering around for a while until we realize that we are really gone that we have no longer a physical instrument to work with, that our speech will not be heard by our loved ones, and nothing we can do about it. Doesn't matter how much we complain, how much tantrum we throw, nobody understands nothing, nobody cares. And at that time, it's a great suffering for us. Also, we will be overwhelmed by the result of our thinking during our lifetime while in the physical body. During the time that we are living, if we keep thinking negatively, then when we die, that's what we get. So when we die without preparing, without meditation on positive power, without connection with God's power, the negative thinking that we have during a lifetime will overwhelm us and take us to unpleasant places. And that's why people say there is hell. We could also escape from that hell if we are conscious enough at that time to walk out of our own prison. But most of the time, we have not been prepared, so we are weak. We are not strong enough to do that. So we have to stay in that negative atmosphere for a while, until it dies down. Now, there's another kind of uh, pressure for us even, not just that, not just our own individual created negativity or pressure or atmosphere or sphere. We have also the collective created consequence of the people in this planet, as well as the, our relatives and friends, closer speaking. Because we have not mastered the art of mastering our own destiny, we have not learned to walk the correct way to heaven, we will be stray here and there, we will be pulled apart into different directions, or pushed into unpleasant scenery, or planet, illusionary planet, which to us at that moment absolutely real. And that's how people say they enter hell and they suffer. But it must not be like that. It must not be like that. Even if you don't want to practice uh, vegetarian compassion, even if you don't want to practice meditation with us, you should always tell yourself and remember that God is merciful. That is the only thought you should remember at the time of death. Then you will be clear enough to see that Jesus stand by, that heaven is opening the gate, that angels is greeting you with music of the celestial realm. You must remember something noble like that, that we are the sons and daughters of God, that we can never be anything lower than that, though nothing at all could harm us. This is the thought should be ingrained in your mind. Like this, you will not fear the angel of death because he doesn't really exist. It exists because we created him, because we believe in him during our lifetime. So he manifests. Whatever you wish shall be given unto you. Knock and it shall be opened, ask and it shall be given. Because in this planet, sometimes we ask for something, it doesn't come immediately, so we think it doesn't work. It works all the time. Just because we 
are hindered by this physical body, we cannot see the result immediately. Sometimes the result come uh, a little bit later and we think we forget. We forget that we have wanted it. We think that, oh, this is just luck or this is just bad fortune that these things happen to me. But nothing really happened without us wanting it in the first place. Also, of course, if we're not strong enough in our will, then the karma, the collective consciousness of negativity or positivity also affect us in daily life as well as the time of departure. In our daily life, we are more shielded by this physical ignorance. At least we do not know something bad's coming. But when we leave this physical protection, we will see everything. Everything affects us immediately. If we die and the loved ones was crying and, and lingering and missing us so much, and they cry and they suffer, we will feel it exactly as if we are suffering. That's why uh, during the time of uh, the loved one's departure, maybe the best is that we should just pray for them to go to heaven and enjoy and be liberated, and not praying, crying and lamenting and missing them so much, because that will make them also feel very miserable and delay their departure to the higher dimension. Death should be celebrated, not mourned for, because that is our final liberation. Nothing can touch us anymore. Nothing can harm us. Nothing can cover us anymore. We will know everything. We will be into everything. We will be anywhere as a fraction of seconds. We have everything that we wish for come true immediately. But in order to prepare for a higher reward than just this, we should learn the art of mastery of our own destiny, of our own future, create our own heaven, prepare our own future, and do not let the atmosphere of other people or the bad karma of other people influence us because we are the master. We are the children of the ocean of love, of God. We have dignity. We should walk like a God. We should act like a God. We should think like a God. It's not easy because we have forgotten how to do that. But it's only a habit, and habit can be trained, can be broken also, with time, with time. During our busy activities, of course, it is difficult for us to control our thought and to train ourselves again into the glory of how we are. That's why we have to choose a little time span during our busy schedule to be quietly alone with ourselves, with God. At that time, we can concentrate our power of thinking, then we can correct the habit of our thought and make it positive. And day by day like this, we will become the Son of Heaven again, as it really is. That's why we should meditate every day, not just after initiation, because after initiation you are liberated already, you are a free man. You really are a free man. No one can touch you anymore. But in order to have a smoother life here and to enjoy Heaven while we are still breathing, in order to remember, retrain ourselves into the Prince of Heaven, we must remind ourselves every day. It's not even enough because we have been 
reminded time after time, long, long time, how bad we are. So now we have to remind us again how good we really are. And that's why it takes time. It takes everyday practice to remember this. You're not going to learn anything. You're just going to remember because there's nothing for you to learn. You are the king of heaven. You're part of heaven, part of the whole universal power. There's nothing you cannot do. Just take time to remember it again. I'm here to help you to remember. And it's not as difficult as you think. It's easier than making a living. It's easier than driving a car. <laughs> it's easier than sleep. So it would be to our benefit that we should try. Because it's so easy and simple. To some of us who could uh, devote the whole heart and mind into regaining heaven, uh, we can give you the whole instruction. And uh, you meditate like two, three hours a day, or as much as you can. Like cut down a little of sleep, talk less on the phone, watch only important news on TV, and don't just sit there and <laughs> watch whatever, number of the qua. So then you will have a lot of time we will find that we have a lot more time to spare if we cut down many of the unnecessary activities that we used to do just to kill time. Now the time we don't have to kill, we use it to live, we use it to resurrect our soul. Then not only we feel good and bless ourselves, we will bless others as well. Habit is hard to break. We all know that. But it doesn't mean impossible. Before I couldn't drive a car. I just had license recently. And when I could drive the car, I feel, my God, I feel like a human being. <laughs> I feel like everybody else in this planet. I was so proud. I want everybody to see that I'm driving. Because I trained myself. <laughs> First time I failed, second time I failed, third time I succeeded. Even to learn driving, it takes so long. It takes effort, money, and concentration. I still can do it, yes, still can do it. Many other things like learning English, even learning to walk. We were born uh, crawling, not even crawling, lying, helpless. <laughs> As a baby, we know how to try. We try to crawl, and then we try to stand up, and then we try to toddling around, and then we try to walk, and then we run, and then now we fly even. Everything is a process of learning. To a baby, it must have been impossible to see the adults running or riding bicycles or driving, jumping around, dancing. But to us, it's easy because we have tried, we have trained ourselves. Similarly, to go to heaven, we can train like that. It looks difficult at first, but it isn't. It is more difficult if we try ourselves. But it's not difficult if somebody else already know how and show us on-hand experience, on-hand teaching. It's very simple. That's why since ancient times, God has sent a lot of teachers to show us the way because we have forgotten. To show us the way uh, doesn't mean that person is better than us. We call him or her teacher just because in the beginning uh, he teach you something. <laughs> so we call them teacher in this planet if somebody teach you something. We call them teacher of English, or, yeah, professor of mathematics, for example. But 
in the order of heaven, there is no one lower, no one higher. Just someone who walked the way first and show the one who walks later. And someone who knows the way already show us is easier, is less stressful and more sure and quicker. We could try to walk back to heaven ourselves, but then uh, so many things we do not know on the road because we have forgotten. And sometimes it could be frightening. And that's why many people feel that they are not up to it. They're scared. But when you have somebody uh, walking with you, holding hands and protect you, and show you where the way to walk and where to avoid, then the road is more pleasant. You have companion. <laughs> it's quicker, it's easier. So, in short, I'm here in case you feel you want to remember again who you truly are. And there's no cost, <laughs> no condition. The so-called five precepts is not the five precepts. It is a measurement of your readiness. Yeah? For example, if we want to go to college, then uh, a high school diploma is a must. Yeah? And a test before college is a must. To measure your standard of education, so to see for yourself and for the professor that whether you're ready or not for college. Similarly, the five precepts or the Ten Commandments in the Bible is not a must for everybody. It's not a commandment for you to break or to keep. It is for you to measure your standard of development, spiritually speaking. Suppose you don't want to steal things from people, but you always like to give to the unfortunate. Suppose you don't ever want to tell a lie because it's against your conscience, and you always tell the truth. That is not because you keep the precepts, it is because your standard of spiritual development is that high. So if you are required to follow the five precepts, like you don't tell a lie, you don't kill even animals, and you don't uh, take things from other people, etc., etc., or as you are recommended to take the vegetarian diet, it is just a remembering, it's just a memoir, it's just a reminding that, are you up to here yet? <laughs> Are you here yet? You know this? Yeah, yeah. And if you agree to all this, for you it's easy, it's natural. That means you are there. You're ready. You're ready to enter sainthood. You're ready to remember yourself. And that's all about the five precepts, or the vegetarian diet, or the Ten Commandments. It's not that God is dictative, or it's not that I am sitting here pointing finger and say, Thou shalt not kill, thou must do this, do that. <laughs> it's not that. These things, these rules, has been passed down from heaven so that we can measure our standard of quality. Remember when Moses came down from the mountain, he handed these uh, Ten Commandments. He said, It's from God. It is from God so that we know where we are, where we stand. So it is not that you must follow me or else, it's not that. You don't even have to follow me. I just teach you once and you can remember all the time. You can do it alone. Unless you want to see me again or you're in doubt, then we will give you uh, an ID card <laughs> so that when you come, people recognize you and let you in see me. Or you can write letter. But these are not always necessary for many people because every day you can meditate alone after we give you instruction, then you know what to do. You'll be your own master every day. The difficulty is not following a master or any master. The difficulty is being your own master. Have a discipline to do what you have chosen to do, what you know is the best for your soul. 
So if we think that we are up to it, <laughs> then we are welcome <laughs> very much. During my speech, even if I haven't taught you anything, your soul will receive invisible instruction to yourself. So if you concentrate enough, if you simple inside enough, you see light already, see heavenly light already. The first question is, God is all merciful and compassionate. How do you explain earthquakes, tidal waves, etc.? There are many ways of looking at things. If we think this physical body, this physical possession, this physical life is all there is about life and the universe, then of course we will think God is so careless, destroying things taking lives from people. But if we see things in a spiritual way, if we trust in God's wisdom, then we know everything is all right. Everything is perfect. That is another way to look at it. More practically speaking, we also are responsible for all the disaster in this planet, not all, but many of them. We cut down trees, so we reduce rain, and we encourage more landslide, encourage more drought, which in turn affect the harvest and uh, make a lot of people hungry. And we test atom bombs here and there, everywhere, we interfere with the stability of this globe, of the way it vibrates and changes and turn, yes. And we cause many of the unspeakable disaster to ourselves. But whatever God takes away, He gives another. Because He's a creator, we never know for what purpose, unless we learn to be one with God, to ascend into a higher dimension where intelligence is boundless, where the vision is limitless. Then we can see the order of work of the universe. Then we understand why some things have happened. We will know that everything is for the best. Then we will not blame God anymore. Does the meditation process give you a clear mind and is this path leading to heaven through Jesus Christ and not changing any of God's principles? Yes, yes. The meditation helps you to see yourself clearer because when the mind comes down and left behind and the physical body is forgotten, then we reveal ourselves as our true selves. And our true selves can always see things better, can always see the truth, the complete truth, because we are not the physical body. Your views on reincarnation, worship of ancestors, its benefits, the law of karma, cause and effect, and what would you say is the common thread that could unite all religions? I mentioned before already, if the power of your thought have created things, which have not arrived during your existence in this planet, and then it will arrive again some other time later. And <laughs> you have to reborn again in order to enjoy that, bad or good, yeah? So be careful what you think <laughs> when you are alive. Then you don't have to enjoy the bad or good consequence, everything we created. And number two, when our ancestor departed from this world, it's just like I have mentioned already. So all you should do is just pray for them if you don't know where they're gone to. Nothing else. Pray, okay? Worship only God. Be grateful to our ancestor and parents, but pray for them to be liberated. Don't use them. 
because they die already. Let them rest, for God's sake. <laughs> Don't pray to them for prosperity, for uh, protection, uh, for whatever material gain that we want to extract from them. They have done their share already during their lifetime. All we do is, if we really love them, pray for them so that God protect them, lift them up to a higher dimension. That's all we should do. No worship, no calling, no nagging, no demanding. The last one, the thread that unites all religion. Okay, uh, that would be good if uh, all the religions united. But uh, actually, we have only one religion, according to my study of different religious uh, scriptures, they say uh, the same thing. The essence of the teaching are the same, that we have one, that God, and that we should find Him or Her. How do we rid ourselves of our ego? Wow, wow, that's a big question. Yes, how, huh? <laughs> only when we see God on a daily basis, only when we see the splendor, the greatness of our Almighty Father, then we feel that we are nothing. Not only we feel nothing because we are humble, just we feel that we know that nothing is really important in this world to compete or to snatch or to make trouble to ourselves, because we know heaven is near. At that time, our ego has no, no place to grow. He, he just died by himself, no food, yeah? Because we don't care for blame and praise anymore. We don't care much for material gain. We have them, we use them. We don't have them, we satisfy with what we have. At that time, the ego will die. Is there such a thing as evil spirits? There are such things as evil spirits. As I have mentioned earlier, those who are not prepared themselves to walk the way of God, they might be confused, they might be very frustrated in the loneliness of the uh, wandering world without guidance, without noble thought to even nourish himself. He will turn into nasty nuisance spirit for a while, for a while only, until his anger died down, or until some angel come and get him somewhere else where he belongs. And the devil is not really an entity. It is a collective power of negative thinking, and that can be very big obstruction to us in spiritual practice, as well as material um, survival. This concentrated negative power could be felt sometimes when we try to reach God, when we try to do uh, some really beneficial work for mankind, because there are some other people who think the opposite of this goodness a noble way. So this power of their thought create this so-called devil, yeah? Otherwise, there is nothing such as devil exists. It wasn't created in the beginning. How can I be and lead a spiritual life coming from a very formal religious Islamic background? There is no need to change your religion. Just meditate. I'll show you how to meditate, that's all. Just keep whatever you believe. Keep your Christianity, keep your Buddhism, keep whatever, the path, the teaching of the Master that is favorite to you. I just show you how to get in touch with the essence of the teaching that you believe. I will just show you how to see the Master who's teaching your reading. For example, you meditate, you can see Jesus if you're a Christian. You can see Buddha and gain some wisdom from him. But sometimes the Buddhists see Jesus and the Christians see Buddha. That, that also happened in our group. <laughs> yeah, it happened all the time. God makes big jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, 
when we ascend into that level of consciousness, we don't care. We know that they are all one. Yes. So we be friend with them all, and they are very friendly to us too. Yes, sometimes they see both. See Jesus and Buddha sit together, drink tea. <laughs> yeah, they have fun up there, all the religious leaders and teachers. Only us crawling on the planet, fighting with each other, who's the best? Does your method include out-of-body experiences? Yes, yes, it is. But it's, uh, this is just the beginning. It's called Astral Project, which you can leave your body. So in our method, we close curtain on that. We just take you straight to a higher astral world first. That is a number one beginner astral projection. And then after if you pass that astral world, we take you to the second world where you see how things are created and why things happen to people. You see the creative power of our own minds and humans' minds. And then after that, you go to a higher world to see the Lord of all creations. I mean, creation in this level only, yeah? We might call him the creator, because he does create. He creates material things, he creates the mind, he creates the feeling, the spiritual aspect of the mind. But then we have to leave that world too, we have to go higher into the dimension of what we call nothingness. And then higher than that, we have to go to the home of the Master, see all the splendor of the Lord, of the representative of the Lord. And then we can go higher and higher still. But after the fifth world, we are already the Master. We regain our mastership. Then we can do what we like with our life, we can lead others also into bliss and happiness. We can be the torch bearer of the world. It's, it's not astral projection, it's the end. It's only the beginning, very low, humble beginning. How do you identify the real God with so many different religions of the world? There's only one God. You see, the Indian, they speak Hindu, okay? They call the enlightened one Buddha. Or the Jewish, they speak Hebrew. And they call the enlightened son of God Chris. Yeah? Etc., etc. But if we translate it into English, there's only one enlightened. That's why even within one religion, people fight with each other. That is a very big mistake. We should correct that. Yeah? Even if there is many gods, even if, suppose if we have different gods, okay, a Muslim god, Christian god, Buddhist god, they all should be merciful. They would never want us to fight with each other, no? Thank you. What can you tell us about extraterrestrial beings? I have some tapes, we have mentioned about that already. But we are all extraterrestrial beings, don't you know that? <laughs> we came from heaven, all of us, extraterrestrial. Nothing to talk about. <laughs> and all, all the leaders that, of the religions that we worship are extraterrestrial. Jesus, Buddha, they supposed to came from somewhere else. So actually, you know already from religious teaching that we have extraterrestrial, right? So if you want to see them, I'll show you how huh? later. <laughs> On my return to this earth, what form of life would I take? Who was I? How will I know who I am and what I'm supposed to do? Oh, you mean the reincarnation? Yes. You return to be whatever you want to be. That's the only truth. You create your existence. You are what you are now because you have chosen to be. And you will be what? Because you have chosen now to be different. We can create different life for ourselves all the time. How would I know what God expects of me 
so as for me to practice and master those requirements. You can go and ask him. Hmm? I'm here to show you so you can go and ask him. I cannot answer for him. <laughs> Besides, even if I tell you what God wants from you, would you even believe me? See? So, first-hand experience is the best. Go find out. Very easy meditation. A note of salutation to you, Master. As you walked in, I just felt so beautiful, and it was though I could see my spiritual Master receiving us with His divine love and beautiful energy. I somehow was a bit emotional just absorbing your beauty from within and your intense energy. Thank you for giving us this opportunity of listening to you and your inspiring speech. There is so much I can identify with. Bless you. And thank you. You must be very pure in the heart to feel that. You must be very devoted to God in order to have sense what you have written. I congratulate you. <laughs> it appears to me as though Master Ching Hai is a gifted person in more ways than one. Can Master please explain to me who or what is the source of her inspiration? Oh, that's all came from him. <laughs> Whatever he gives is all his. I have nothing. I was born with nothing. <laughs> I grown up with nothing. <laughs> And I have been given all these talents late in life because I practice meditation, I seek God first before everything else, and then He gives me everything else. All the things I never ask. How do you balance the spiritual world and the physical world? Well, we have to practice the spiritual life. Because right now, most of us are practicing physical way of life already. So there's another part missing because we are not only physical, we are also spiritual being. So the reason we suffer because we only practice physical way and forget the, uh, the other better half as a spiritual way. So to balance it, we start practicing now. If heaven exists, Duality exists. Is our goal not to lose duality and to become one with the Supreme Consciousness? Oh, yes. Heaven is not everything. Yeah? But we go there first. <laughs> Better than go to hell first. Just one at a time. We go to heaven so that we can have a taste of the celestial life, and we met all the heavenly beings, and learn further, and then we be one with the Most High, of course. Yeah? We pass through heaven. Yeah? Must one ask for protection when one is busy meditating? Yes, you should. But uh, in our way of practicing, you are protected already, 24 hours, by the Master Power. The one that who teach you is responsible to protect you until you are able to protect yourselves. If we know that we have some relative that does bad magic, what should we do to protect ourselves? That's bad news. You believe in God. Yeah, pray to God all the time. Black magic is the opposite of love, opposite of light and God. So if you turn to love, you turn to God, then you will be protected. Besides, if you do not do anything wrong in your life, no black magic can ever touch you. It is not allowed. Black magic can only harm immoral people when you are weak, with guilt and uh, ridden with bad conscience. So make sure your life is a sample of purity, then nothing can harm you.
Do we have free will or is everything predestined? Predestined and free will. Predestined because we have chosen the path that we walk in this life to fulfill our purpose. Free will because we could change it for the future. When you are doing your meditation, what are you supposed to think? How do you meditate? Because when you close your eyes, the only thing you see is darkness. See only darkness? Yes. Now you see darkness, not everybody sees darkness. <laughs> I will teach you later, okay? Then you can practice at home and you will see light, definitely. You say that hell only exists because we believe in it. But how can you say that it is not the same with heaven and with God? Heaven and God exist already. After that, we create this world by our thinking, by our wanting to be here, which is not bad. I don't say this physical world is bad. It's also created for the purpose of growing so that we can know God again. Of course, you could say that, okay, we create God too. But why not? We are God, and God created forever, forever, and forever. So you can say you create God, or God has already existed and created us, but we are one with God. Argue back and forth. <laughs> no use. Come inside and see whether God exists or not, and then you can tell me. All right? Will Tai Chi help me reach a higher level of consciousness as a moving meditation? Uh, good for you. Good for you, yes. It also needs concentration and it also helps you to relax and helps you to, to feel elevated in some degree. But, but that's not all, okay? It's not all. We have to contact the light of God. We have to know God in the form of light and other teaching in order to truly understand. What does the word supreme in the title Supreme Master Ching Hai mean? It means the Supreme Master Ching Hai. Yeah. It means God. God used the human instrument to share His love, teaching with mankind. Yeah? It's not this physical body that teach you. It's an office of God. <laughs> Ching Hai is a is a Chinese name for ocean of love. Yes, we have another name now. <laughs> ocean of love means God Almighty. It's the same thing, same thing. How does spiritual well-being or mental well-being relate or improve people's health who have permanent illnesses, for instance, like diabetes? When we practice spiritual Everything else also improve, including our health, even our financial situation. But we should not seek that as a purpose of meditation. We should seek only to know God. Then He will regulate everything else. When we become a part of the great lake of consciousness, do we retain our own individual consciousness? Yes and no. Because um, we have been already so-called separated from God, so we still have individual so-called consciousness. But when we reach into higher level of uh, uh, realization, then we are everywhere. We are one with God. That's why Jesus reclaimed, I and my Father are one. But <laughs> there are more level after that. Yes, so it is infinite. Because at that time, you still have I and my Father. You still have two. <laughs> and we rise higher and higher. There are wonder to be discovered. Is our intuition and mental pictures fantasy or reality? It depends on what kind of practice and what, what kind of mentality you possess right now. 
if you take drugs or, or do some uh, magic or something like that, then you enter into hallucination, which look like real, but is very detrimental to our mind as well as our body in the long run. But if we use the self, the true self, the God self, which we'll see the God self, then it is not hallucination, it is true, because it will make us elevated, it will make us feel ecstatic, it makes us wiser, happier, healthier, and fearless. Can a person see God directly in meditation? Yes, yes. That's what we meditate for. I believe I have bad karma. How do I get rid of it? Come to initiation, I help to get rid of it for you. As an atheist, what are the benefits of Kuan Yin to me? Make you become a, a better atheist. <laughs> I told you, I promise I don't make you change any religion. <laughs> religion. Just meditate, then you understand everything. Yeah? Master, thank you for your prayers for this country and your efforts for peace in our world. I would like to ask, does the study of systems such as Taoism, Kabbalism, and Shamanism interfere with Kuan Yin practice? No. What belongs to Caesars belong to him. Yeah, we do our things, the government do their things. The football, play football. The tennis players, play tennis. Yes, we are up to the business of spiritual practice and elevation of the soul. Whatever ism, no problem. Yes, just outside. Inside, we contact with God. Do you believe in the seven chakras? Yes, they exist. In a normal yoga practice, one has to go through all these seven chakras in order to reach the third eye and be liberated. But in our method, you start from there. You don't go step, 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 take too long. That's why I say, we say immediate enlightenment is quicker, easier. There's a trick. <laughs> Please explain twin souls and the male and female aspects of oneself. There's no such thing as twin souls. We are all separated. Okay? But sometimes we encounter someone which is very compatible to us and we call that person soulmate. It happens. If we have been working, living, loving with that soul for a long time before in different incarnations, and when we met this so-called soul, reincarnate again in a different body, we feel familiarity because we have done things together all the time before, so everything is easy, everything compatible, everything is uh, harmonious, so that, that is what we call soulmate, okay? <laughs> we, we do that all the time, we encounter this. And people who encounter these so-called soulmates, they're happily married to each other, or they become very good sisters and brothers together, or good parents, child together. The relationship is very good. So this is soulmate. Who or what is Kuan Yin? Kuan Yin means the contemplation of the inner world of God. Yeah, that's it. And there was one saint, lady saint, who also practiced this method of the light and the word of God, the sound, and her name is Kuan Yin. Therefore, the Chinese people uh, praise her as goddess of mercy because when she was alive, she grant wishes, she helped people, she blessed everyone, just like any living master would. And so they continue worshiping her up till now as the goddess of mercy. Just like we continue worshiping Buddha, continue worshiping Jesus, etc. Welcome, Master. Thank you for coming today. I am to be initiated today. My partner is not initiated. Can you please comment on why I cannot share my experiences with her? 
I enjoy sharing. I am not sure if your partner is ready to even hear all this. Yeah? Number one. Number two, whatever is given to you from heaven, you should keep quiet about it. Because this world belongs to Caesar. Yeah? And what you get belongs to heaven. Most of people in this world, if they do not practice the same as you do, and they do not enter the same kingdom, all the things you tell them is like Greeks. <laughs> they will not understand. And that's why they crucify Jesus, remember? Because he said things about heaven that people don't understand. He spoke the truth, but they label him blasphemy just because the people in this planet speak different language, understand different things. So please, be careful about what you talk. You can say general term like, okay, uh, if you meditate, you will see light and you hear the word of God. I also have this kind of experience. That's it. No more detail about which heaven you have been, what kind of melody you heard, what kind of light you've seen, uh, what thing Jesus have told you during your meditation, etc., etc. No detail. Okay? People do not believe you. Thank you for gracing us with your beautiful presence. We have waited a long time for this. Are you working with the Himalayan masters? I'm working with all of the masters. Not only Himalayans. How do drugs affect one's spiritual growth? It affects everything, don't you know? It makes your mind blurred, it shrinks your brain, it uh, clogs your nerves, it makes you hallucinate it, it makes you go crazy when you don't have it, and become addicted to it. It breaks your family, uh, love, relationship. It drives your girlfriend, boyfriend away. It makes you become a criminal sometimes. How do you have peace in this chaotic state of mind in order to practice spiritual even? Huh? You have to be first calm and normal. We have enough confusion with work, with war, with disaster, with relationship already. Do not create more confusion for yourself and damage your only vehicle to reach God. This is the body, the temple. Keep it well in order, healthy, because you must use it. Okay? Drug is no, 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 no. I love you and your voice particularly. Tell me how many lives do we live and how do we know which one is which? Thank you for your compliment. <laughs> how many lives we live here, it depends on us. We could finish it in one lifetime. We could be too attached to all the wonder of this physical creation that we return again for more enjoyment and exploration of the Lord's glory through physical manifestation. So each one is different, all right? If I want to follow God, how must I do it and what must I feel to know I've accepted Him? At the time of initiation, you see God, a part of the manifestation of God in the form of light, sound, music, or masters of the past. And then from there, you will know. You can only know by your own experience. You cannot know by persuasion or from my experience to you. Each one must face God alone. How can one help the dying? You pray. You pray in whatever religion. It helps if you're sincere. The power of your love, when you gather together, praying for one person unconditionally, in any situation, also in dying situation, would help him elevate his own consciousness and speed his way to heaven. How and when will I be able to attend to any of your lectures again? When are you coming back? 
whatever important to you, you make time. Okay? Nobody can decide for you. Make time. Hmm? Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.